Welcome back to the presentation about predictive analytics to find valuable contributors in fundraising. My name is Gunilla Rudander and I'm working for IBM SPSS. And now I'm going to do a demo of how you can work. I'm going to a program called Modeler, that's a data mining program. And here you work with commands, you drag and drop all these commands. So I start to read in some data. Just double click and I find the file I want to use. After that, you have to tell the computer what is your target with this investigation? What are you going to find out? So I use the type command for that and here I tell the computer which of the information is most interesting. This is the one. Interested to buy cookbooks from me. That's my target variable. All other variables is my input variables. If I don't want any of these I just choose another command like none here. Then the last thing to do is to do a model because I want to have some help to find the best patterns. What is the combination of characteristics that decide who is interested to buy? So I use the shade model for the moment. If you don't know then you can get some help from the program which model is the best. Then you use the three first commands here and you will get help to find out the best method. So I double click on this command, run, and then I have the results in this diamond. I just double click the diamond and get the results from there. We can see that occupation was the most important variable and then age group. If we click on the viewer, we see a tree diagram and I will show you the tree diagram here in the PowerPoint so I can explain. So from the database, the test base, because this was a testing on a, just a random sample of the database, I could find that 12%, almost 12% was interested to buy. Then we can see that if you were working at home, it's 20% among these people who is interested to buy. And that's compared to the rest, there is, was only 4%. If you go further in this group, working at home, we can see that the design is important. And here we can see that everyone that got four color in their marketing campaign, there is 30% that said, yes, I want to buy a cookbook. And going further in this group, we could see that the age was very important. We can see that 42% among these people in the age 45 to 55 years old, they were interested to buy. And here we have a very interesting profile. And the profile is just some rules. And the rule is working at home, getting four color in the marketing campaign and have an age of 45 to 55 years old. That's one rule. And every square you see here in the end of the tree is different rules. And I want to save all these rules and use it for the future. So I go back to the program and I click on the generate rule set and I call it rules. And th the things that happen now is that I get a new command that is including all the rules. And I have another stream where I put these rules. So it will go into my rest of my customer database, new customer that I haven't tried yet, put in these rules and get some score here in the table. So if you get, go, get there, I will see a list of everyone. And I will explain this list here. We can see that the four first customer in this customer base, there, we can see it's 42% chance that these four people will say yes to buy a cookbook. So this is a very good group to, to send out the marketing campaign to. And we can maybe avoid sending out to number 8, 9 and 10 because there is just 11% chance to buy. So this is how you can act. And what I have showed you now is first going in to a test database and trying to find some information about who is interested to buy. And after that, I just save all this information and put this new information on quite new customers that I haven't tried to send out anything to yet. I use this information and 
I do predictive analytics in this way. I use it and I act from it. I just send out information, marketing information to people who is likely to buy and that's cost effective. That's how UNICEF did and they were very successful. If you have other kinds, other types of variables, like these quantitative variables, that's also possible to use. Like who is giving us most money, for example. And more findings could be found from people who has been working more than 11 years and is above 46 years old. There we have a mean value of 1500 crowns. If we go to another group, unmarried people with a lower education, there we have only 554 crowns. So we have different profiles here also, but here you see the mean value instead of the percents. Different business goals. I think maybe your organization has different business goals if you compare to others. So the different business goals is something that is important to know before you start to do predictive analytics because also the method is a little bit different uh, depending on the goals you have in your organization. So uh, here is four examples. It could be to increase funding or so improve allocation. That's one. Another one is to maybe find out the best donors to get more uh, revenue and maybe do cross-selling on this. And another thing to save cost, if you want to buy new address read from new address registers, you can buy the type that matches your best profiles. And you can also do marketing with different messages to different segments. So summary. I had made a demo here and what I did was the same that UNICEF was doing, predictive analytics, collecting data, analyze and predict and then act on it. And different business goals is also something that decides what kind of predictive analytics you should do. And we at IBM could help you to find out what maybe you need if you are interested to start doing this. We have different solutions. If you are doing questionnaires and want to create questionnaires, we have something called data collections. If you want to have information about your questionnaires, how people have answered it, or just having some information from your customer base, then you can use statistics or modeler. Statistics is the statistical program and modeler is the data mining program that I showed you during this demo. Thank you very much for watching this uh, webinar and welcome back to other.